Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna talk about exercises, specifically technical exercises, though this can actually apply to any kind of exercise or skill that you wanna work out on the guitar. So the reason I wanna to touch on this today is I've been noticing that I have some students who basically have some, I guess, complaints about practicing your traditional types of exercises that focus on things like technique. For example, a lot of guitar pedagogy will involve teaching technical exercises based around very repetitive little loops that don't really sound entirely too musical. And this is especially true for techniques like picking or maybe finger picking and stuff like that. Um, for example, here's a classic kind of Yingwei Malmsteen kind of picking line that focuses on just a six note pattern. So anyways, what I noticed is that Students will learn these types of ideas and then they will become incredibly burnt out with practicing technique because these kinds of lines are simply boring to play and they don't sound very good. And so they will often hit a wall because I guess there's a finite amount of uh, patience that one can have with working on these things. So what I suggest as a solution to this is to get into the habit of creating your own exercises. And the best way to go about doing this is to start from a philosophical and methodological standpoint. So if you wanna create your own exercises, the most important thing to start with is to think about what do you wanna practice or what, what, it is, what is it that you wanna develop? And then you wanna think about that in the context of what kind of sound you like. So what kind of styles of music are you interested in playing? What kind of rhythms and harmony excites you and stuff like that? And so for me, what I like to do is start with this kind of initial inquiry, and then I like to move towards creating exercises that take into consideration the technical aspects that I wanna work on with the musical aspects. So instead of, I guess, adopting a set of prescribed exercises that I ought to do, I tend to just try and write lines that are difficult for me to play with the hope that they will capture some kind of technical skill that I think needs to be worked on. So for example, with math rock, I find that this is a really good genre for working out these kind of ideas because when we play math rock, a lot of the different things that we're gonna write are inherently very difficult based on the techniques that are in style. For example, uh, tapping is a very, um, I guess like deft, technique. And so when we write math rock lines, oftentimes we'll practice these already pretty intricate technical skills. But when it comes to designing your own exercises, we can take these kind of concepts and apply them to a more specific context. So imagine that you're already good at tapping, but you want to create an exercise that can help you in a more broad musical situation. Perhaps something that you would think about would be writing a line that involves like a combination of tapping, uh, picking, maybe like legato in your left hand and other techniques of that nature so that you can combine all these skills into a musical context. And what I find that this will help you do is obviously be able to use them in relation to other techniques, but it also be able to help you to actually use them in an improvisational sense in relation to like kind of the other techniques that you might have, which can be very useful. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that if you create exercises where you utilize a technique within context that might be more beneficial to you in the long run than simply just practicing um, a certain technique in isolation over and over again in loop. Because if you do that, that won't necessarily mean that you're good at switching from that technique to another technique in context. So another thing too, that you could try would be just to, um, yeah, write lines that are really difficult that use a certain kind of harmony that you like. So one thing that I think is a pretty cool thing to do is to take like a scale pattern, for example, and then try to visualize the pattern uh, as it is on the fretboard and attempt to form some new connections based on the pattern using, I guess, like notes and note, relationship, note relationships that you've never tried before. And if you can do that in a way that is like very difficult for you to, to finger, I think that can be a way to open up new pathways while also really challenging yourself at a physical level. But when you're doing that, 
um, you know, it's important to make sure that you're not just doing random things that sound, I guess, unpalpable to you. You want to write things that actually sound good to you. So, yeah, I guess in short, write things that are difficult to play, that utilize techniques that you want to work on, and use them in a way that sounds musical by aiming towards sounds that you actually enjoy. And especially in the case of math rock, you can get a lot of benefit out of this as the things that you play will already be quite technical. So just push yourself. Push yourself to write things that you can barely muster at first and try to master those things and then move on to new things that you can barely play and think about the techniques that are happening within them. And if you can do that, you should be able to pump out some great exercises for yourself that will be tailored to your own style and your own sound. And while I guess I was initially trash talking re repetitive exercises, I wouldn't abandon these completely either, but it's important to supplement them with other kind of musical things or the, otherwise you're gonna burn out. So hopefully you can apply this to your practice routine and add that into, in addition to your more rudimentary things and use that to help build a technical practice regimen that will nourish your skill set in a way that is not boring. All right, folks, so there you have it. If you like this video, then please make sure to like, share, and subscribe as I put out a new video every single week. And if you want to support the channel, then please consider checking out my Patreon page, where for as little as a dollar a month, you guys will have access to some bonus content like guitar tabs, lesson notes, chord diagrams, and other goodies like that. And honestly, the Patreon page really helps me out as it allows me to get some extra equipment to make these videos better. And finally, I also teach guitar lessons through Skype. There's a link to my email address in the description below. So yeah, thank you all for watching this video. I hope that you guys have fun writing your own unique exercises and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.